Hello everyone, this is Mike and you are watching Really. So, the greatest joke of this blood spattered horror comedy from Elizabeth Banks is that it exists. Well, before we give you the review, please subscribe to our channel. Moving on, when you were in high school or college, did you know someone who would stay up late, get stoned and wonder what would happen if you got a pet high? Well, that person went to Hollywood. Um, you know, how else to explain Cocaine Bear? Um, a chaotic, blood splattered major studio horror comedy whose greatest joke is that it exists. The title, which has drawn comparisons to the equally functional Snakes on a Plane, says it all. The year is 1985 after a pratfall in a plane leads a smuggler to drop a ton of drugs on the mountains of Georgia. A bed covers it, snorts it up, and turns into a mix of Tony, Montana, and Jason. Well, directed by Elizabeth Banks from a script by Jimmy Warden, this movie arrives in theaters with considerable anticipation based on the title and its terrific trailer. For an audience desperately looking for a good time, they'll find it more. At its best, Cocaine Bear has the feel of an inside joke. It constantly invites you to laugh at it. The producers are clearly aiming to capture the lightning in a bottle that Megan pulled off earlier this year. Another universal horror comedy whose slick special effects elevated its B-movie. Well, whereas Megan stared clear of too much on-screen violence, angling for a PG-13 rating inspired by slasher films of the 1980s, not to mention great horror comedies from that era like the Evil Dead films, Banks grasped the comic potential of the gross out. Well, in the blunt spirit of the title, let me get right to the point. Two severed legs, two fingers shot off, and you know, some splattered brains are uh, well and got equally contorted wrist and all kinds of guts and blood and human knots. But Banks doesn't always dole out the, you know, Sarah artfully and you know, but she comes to that you know, too much necessary for comedy. Um, while it beats out Megan in levels of gruesomeness, Coke and Bear doesn't have that film's mean strike or moments of acid weirdness, well, or it's steadily building momentum. In fact, Coke and Bear too often feels like a one-joke movie stretched thin. Gifted dramatic actors are tasked with thankless roles, including Kerry Russell as a protective mom, you know, um, and who else? Um, Isaiah Whitlock Jr. as an irritated cop with a bland, you know, side plot involving a pet. And by far the best, Margot as a love-hungry park, t- you know, park ranger who takes more punishment than anyone. The plot twist can seem irrelevant, including a betrayal that has the impact of a soft sneeze and the script becomes fully sentimental at the end with characters forced to say things like you're more than a drug dealer you are my friend my best friend you know now nothing comes close to upstaging the bear an animal perfect for this yana blurring role because it moves so seamlessly in the public consciousness between cop and terrifying at one point cocaine bear sniffs a hint of white powder and emerges with renewed strength, you know, um, as fun as this movie can be, one chase scene in an ambulance makes up for a few road jump scares. There are frequently hints of a better on, you know, better one side, uh, better one, better one inside it. The best version is a raucous, uh, you know, transgressive comedy of the kind they supposedly don't make anymore. Banks don't, you know, bank does seem to get away with some giddy, dangerous moments like a scene in which two preteens um, try to do cocaine, it gets a few laughs but leaves plenty more on the table. Well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you like it.